Hello ladies and gentlemen of YouTube, this is Megnius and welcome to another episode of videos where we talk about rockets. We are once again going to be talking about SpaceX's Falcon 9 rockets today because today in approximately 4 hours and 13 minutes we are going to have another launch of the Falcon 9. Now if that's all you want to see, if you, if you want to see that you don't really care what it's launching, you don't want to know about the orbit or anything like that, then you can just go ahead and go to this page right here, spacex.com slash webcast you can click on the link below in the video description and you don't need to listen to the rest of this video the rest of this video is for those of you my subscribers and maybe other people who are curious about why is this launch important what are they doing that's different this time and in order to talk about that first i would like to talk about the last flight of the falcon 9 which was the maiden flight of the falcon 9 version 1.1 which was this star right here the six star this is the patch for this launch by the way the ses eight one two three four five six seven the seventh flight of the falcon 9 i love these patches they were awesome and just to talk about the sixth flight just a little bit that was the demo flight of the falcon 9 version 1.1 it was a successful flight they successfully managed to get into orbit although they did have a small problem with the second stage relighting once it was in orbit it wasn't able to reignite that was a problem and supposedly they've done some slight modifications to this the SES-8 Falcon 9 launch rocket thingy with the second stage they have added some extra insulation to the fuel lines to stop them from freezing apparently it came in contact with some of the liquid oxygen and it got really cold and of course that's a bad thing but they've fixed that it's probably going to be okay but we're going to watch you know hesitantly nonetheless and be a little bit worried but Basically, the last flight, the sixth one, was about two months ago in September, and as well as being a successful flight, it was also the first attempt to recover the first stage, falling back to Earth and attempting to do a soft hover slam above the ocean surface. That did not go exactly according to plan. I would say it was about a 70% success. And unfortunately, we will not be able to attempt that again this flight. The next time they will be attempting recovery attempts will be in February with one of the ISS missions. So, now that we've gotten that out of the way, what is different about SES-8? SES-8 is a telecommunication satellite, and as a telecommunication satellite, it has to go to the geosynchronous orbit, geosynchronous Earth orbit. Now, this is very different from the rest of Falcon 9 launches that have happened in the past. SpaceX has never placed a satellite in geosynchronous orbit before, and if you don't know what that is, then clearly you haven't watched our Kerbal Space Program series. If you haven't, you should, but just to give you guys like a basic rundown of what a geosynchronous orbit is, or a geostationary orbit as you may know it, we're going to look at the solar system. You guys know that Mercury is close to the sun, right? Mercury goes around the sun pretty fast. In fact, if you want to know how long a Mercury year is, it's about 88 days. Venus is further out. It goes around the sun slower at about 225 days. Earth is 365, of course, and Mars is, what, 687. I have it written down right here. So basically the idea is the closer something orbits to the celestial body it goes around, the faster it goes around it. All right, that's wonderful. The same thing happens with Earth and our satellites. So looking at this wonderful little GIF that's uh, very, very low quality, but it basically gets the idea. If you have a satellite that's very close to Earth, it's going to go around the Earth much faster than the Earth is rotating. If you have a satellite all the way out here, then it's going to revolve around the Earth much slower than the Earth is rotating. There is a secret, well, it's not really a secret, but there's a wonderful little spot that in the GIF is right here, where you will revolve around the Earth at the same speed that the Earth is rotating. This means that from the perspective of the Earth, a person standing on Earth's surface, that satellite remains stationary, thus the name geostationary satellite. Satellites like this are generally used for things where you want to provide coverage to an area continuously, such as for cell phones, televisions, telecommunications, you know, things like that. So that's what SES-8 is, and this is what they are going to attempt to do. The problem with this is that generally before, Everything that SpaceX has done has been quite close to Earth, low Earth orbit. But geosynchronous orbit for Earth is going to be about, what, 
35,786 kilometers. For those of you who use miles, that's about 22,236 miles above the surface of the Earth. That's quite a ways further than SpaceX is used to going, so this is sort of like a big thing for SpaceX. They want to do this right, they want to get it done well. And not only that, but also in order to save the satellite about 300 meters per second of Delta V. Again, if you're not sure what Delta V is, you guys should really watch our Kerbal Space Program series. But to save the satellite about 300 meters per second of Delta V, they're actually going to go much further beyond this 35,786 kilometers, all the way to about 80,000, which I can't even go to on my screen because, you know, my screen isn't big enough. But they're going all the way out to 80,000 kilometers. For those of you who use miles, that's 49,709 miles. And the reason they're doing that is because with the highest point in your orbit, our AP if you play Kerbal Space Program, with it all the way out there, it's much easier to make inclination changes. They need a certain inclination for this satellite, and changing the inclination too close to Earth is just very, very expensive for the satellite. So they're going to try to save the satellite some Delta V by changing the inclination all the way out here, and then after that's done, pull it back into a geosynchronous orbit. So that's very complex, but it's well understood the orbital mechanics of that. Hopefully SpaceX will be able to pull it off. And to close this after I've explained all of this, I just want to show you guys some pictures of SES-8. It's currently inside the payload fairing. Look at this beautiful rocket. Look at this thing. Oh, yeah. Engineering at its finest. Here it is erect. Oh, erect. I'm making jokes on my YouTube channel, but yes, so it's all set up and it's going to be launching in about four hours and seven minutes, assuming that everything goes according to plan. You guys should show up probably about 5 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, show up 30 minutes early so you can see the live webcast and hear all sorts of information about SES-8, learn about the modifications to the Falcon 9 version 1.1, etc., etc. It's a very important launch. All sorts of things are new. You guys should check it out if you're interested in space or rocketry or anything like that. My name is Magnius. Thank you so much for watching, and I will see you next time.